Well, thank you. Thank you. Last week, we began uh, the cycle of legendary stories about Joseph and his brothers. Now, you may remember that in Unity Metaphysics, Joseph represents our power or our faculty of imagination because Joseph is having dreams. <coughs> our dreams are our imagination allowed to roam freely. Dreams frequently involve enactments of our personal conceptions and concerns, both positive and negative. Dreams reflect our conscious, consciousness unconstrained by the limits of time and space. To quote a song from Cinderella, a dream is a wish your heart makes. <laughs> Joseph dreams that he and his brothers are out in the field binding sheaves of wheat. And Joseph dreams that his sheaf stands up straight and tall while his, other, while his brother's sheaves all gather around it and they bow down. Joseph, Joseph's dream means that he thinks that he will rule his brothers someday. And Joseph has another dream where the sun, the moon, and 11 stars are all bowing down to him, meaning that he will rule his father, his mother, and all of his brothers. Joseph represents our power of imagination, but at this point in the story, Joseph displays very poor judgment and a lack of discipline, because instead of keeping his big mouth shut, he tells his family about his dreams. Joseph is, uh, Joseph's brothers are already pretty resentful because Joseph is daddy's favorite. And this part of the story exemplifies the helpful practical lessons that we can take directly from the Bible Please do not share your dreams. <laughs> do not share your goals, your aspirations with anyone, even people that you love, unless you know, unless you know that you know that you know that they will support you 120%. Do not tell your parents, do not tell your siblings, your spouses, your lovers, do not tell your bosses or coworkers, do not tell anyone who might try to talk you out of your dream. Now, some of you are lucky. Some of you have a prayer partner. A prayer partner's job is to hold your confidence, to keep your secrets, and support your vision. And I'll give you an example here. You all are my prayer partner for this for this. Uh, example, uh, you're my prayer partner and I come to you and say, I want to enter the Lincoln Marathon and I'm going to win. Now, everyone else in my world, all of those people out there, not you all, you're my prayer partners. Everybody else in my world would take a look at my age and my physical condition and say, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. Uh, if they're more supportive, maybe they maybe they are friendly and they're more supportive, and they might tell me, "Well, you're going to have to get in shape. You're going to have to lose twenty or thirty pounds and start training hard every day." But even then, you're never going to win because you're up against the best runners of, in Nebraska. <laughs> At best, your supporters will, my supporters will see me taking the intermediate steps required, but they're not going to see me winning. But you're my prayer partner. And you, and I know that you are going to support my dreams and my visions 120%. I tell you my dream, and you tell me, I see you crossing the finish line with your arms stretched out in victory. That's a prayer partner's job. So Joseph 
tells his family about his dreams. And his brothers are so upset, so angry, that they one day they see Joseph heading toward them, and they start making plans. They say to one another, and this is Genesis 37, 19, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of these pits, and then we shall say that a wild beast has devoured him, and we will see about these dreams. But then the oldest brother, Reuben, hears this, and he says, well, don't, don't kill him. Shed no blood. Cast him into this pit here in this wilderness, but lay no hand upon him. That seems like a... Don't you have to lay hands on somebody in order to throw them into a pit? Anyway... So Joseph, he's, he comes to his brothers, and they, they take his robe, they take that coat of many colors. Symbolically, they steal his dreams, and they cast him into a pit. And just then, a caravan, a caravan of Ishmaelites or Midianites, one writer tells, calls them Ishmaelites, one writer calls them Midianites, and I think last week I called them Gadites, as long as they're not mosquito bites. <laughs> anyway, uh, the Ishmaelites wander by, and one of the brothers, Judah, gets the bright idea to sell Joseph into slavery. Sell Joseph to the Ishmaelites. The brothers take that robe, that coat of many colors, and they, they rip it up, they smear blood on it, and they take it to Jacob, their father. And the brothers tell Jacob that a wild beast has killed and ate Joseph. What a marvelous story of brotherly love. <laughs> I wonder if my brothers or sister ever wanted to sell me into slavery. Alice, <laughs> you back there? <laughs> I didn't hear the response, but anyway, Joseph is, Jacob, the father, is so upset that he is inconsolable. Everybody tries to comfort jo Jacob, but he says, I shall go down to Sheol, mourning my son. Now, here's a little bit of Bible. Sheol is the place of the big sleep. In ancient Hebrew thought, there is no heaven or hell, no, not really any afterlife. When you die, you just go to the big sleep. That's it, That's you're done. Food for worms. Uh, so, good people, bad people, doesn't matter, indifferent. When you died, you went to Sheol, the place of the big sleep. But meanwhile, the Ishmaelites, or the Midianites, or the Mosquito Bites, they go down into Egypt and they sell Joseph to a guy named Potiphar. And Potiphar is an officer in Pharaoh's army. So Joseph is now Potiphar's slave or indentured servant. Genesis uh, 39, 2 says, The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. Now, Joseph is a slave, an indentured servant, and yet he is becoming successful. Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph and caught, No wonder I'm having a hard time. I'm not wearing my glasses. There you are. There. All of a sudden, those blurry words got a lot clearer. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, Potiphar saw that the Lord was with Joseph and caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. And here again is one of those helpful, practical lessons. It does not matter the situation or circumstance that you find yourself in. It doesn't matter where you are, what you've done. It does not matter. When we are led and when we are guided and when we say yes and when we follow that guidance, we will prosper. Now, that abundance, that, a prosper that prosperity may not look like what we want or expect, but we will prosper. We may still have work to do, but we will prosper. And Potiphar sees that Joseph 
is intelligent, he's hardworking, and he puts Joseph in charge of his entire household. Everything that he has, Joseph is, is the guy that's making decisions for the household when Potiphar's away. Now, apparently, Joseph is a handsome guy. He's, he's, he's good looking. And Potiphar's wife begins to notice him. And she tries to seduce him. Come and lie with me, the Bible says. She makes a play for Joseph. But Joseph is beginning to change. He's allowing spirit to guide and train him, allowing spirit to discipline that wonderful imagination of his. And instead of having wild imaginings, Joseph can use the power of this imagination to play the tape forward. Playing the tape forward is something they teach in 12-step groups. If I follow this course of action, I can play the tape forward and I can imagine the outcome. Let me see. Now, the last hundred times or so that I took a drink, bad things happened. I cracked up the car or I landed in jail or I mouthed off to my boss or I cheated on my spouse. But I can play the tape forward. And instead of taking that drink, I can play the tape forward and imagine the consequences of my actions. Joseph can play the tape forward knowing that bad things will happen if he sleeps with Potiphar's wife. So Joseph refuses. But as he turns away, she grabs his clothes and Joseph gets away but leaves her holding his garment. And then Potiphar's wife turns the whole thing around and accuses Joseph. She tells her husband, this is Genesis 39, 17, this Hebrew servant whom you brought among us, she's trying to blame not only Joseph, but also blaming Potiphar. She's, uh, this Hebrew servant came to me to insult me, but as soon as I lifted my voice, he left his garment and fled. Now, who's Potiphar going to believe? His wife or this some nobody slave? So, Joseph winds up in prison. But Potiphar must have known the ways of his wife. She might, he might have known that she had a wandering eye. If a servant attacked a slave, if a servant, a slave, attacked the master's wife, what do you think was going to happen? <laughs> you know, he, he wouldn't just land in prison. Potiphar would have killed him. So Joseph is in prison. But again, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. Even in prison, he finds favor with the jailkeeper who makes Joseph a, a kind of a trustee. <coughs> in charge of the other prisoners. Genesis 39, 23, the prison keeper paid no heed to anything in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Again, it doesn't matter what your situation, what your circumstances are. It does not matter where we find ourselves, when we are led and when we are guided, when we say yes and follow our guidance, we will prosper. Now I'm, I'm tempted to continue on with the story. As I said last week, the Joseph cycle of stories is the longest one in the entire book of Genesis. So we'll pick up the rest later. But I want to invite you to movie night this Wednesday. It's Wednesday, June 12th at 6 p.m. We will watch Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, starring Dasmi, uh, Donny Osmond. Uh, Dasmi. <laughs> I love this musical. Like I said, I, I, I think I've seen probably six or seven 
uh, different uh, productions of it. I, uh, I first saw it back in uh, Lexington, Kentucky. It was uh, the University of Kentucky put on a production. I still think to this day, I think that's the best one I ever saw. <laughs> Maybe that was just the first one and I was so impressed. But uh, yeah, we, be sure to join us this coming Wednesday night, June 12th at 6 p.m. and we will watch Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And be sure to discipline your wild imagination, and you too will prosper in any situation and any circumstance. God bless you all. All right. And this is our opportunity, yours and mine, to pour out the gift of God from within us through our tithes and our love offerings. And can we share this offertory blessing together? Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am joy-filled and grateful. Thank you, God. And you can send your gifts, your tithes, your love offerings to paypal.me slash unitylincoln. That's paypal.me slash unitylincoln. You can also support Unity Lincoln by sending your gift to Unity Lincoln, P.O. Box 30209, Lincoln, Nebraska, 68503. Or you can go to our webpage at unitylincoln.org, and there you will find a convenient link to donate via PayPal. You can also help support Unity Lincoln by liking us on Facebook and subscribing on YouTube. And give and God gives it back to you. affirmation for our church family. Together, Unity Lincoln is blessed to draw the people, funds, and all that is required for the health and growth of our community and peace in the world, heart to heart. And we still need your help to help keep us warm and cool to help repair